you're going to see a lot of minorities on academic probation because they are being placed in universities that they are not ready for. They are not cut out for that just yet. That's awesome. Bro, this guy is just a racist. Holy f He said black people are just not ready for Harvard. Anytime you f see a black conservative just say some out-of-pocket sh just think for a moment how you would feel if a white person said it. You know what? Let's move on from that to this black conservatives versus white liberals. A lot of you wanted me to watch this video. It's time. White Americans have way more advantages than black Americans. Do white Americans have more advantages because they're white or do just white Americans have advantages because of historic factors? Um, I think that people want to argue at the end of the day over whether it's because you're white or not. I think that the answer is because you're white in the past, and that's how it kind of carries over to today. You know, even in times of the United States- For the record, before people freak the fuck out, guys, Destiny, the gnome that is in front of your screens, has a metric ton of up takes, uh, specifically as it pertains to race issues, yada, yada, yada. None of that matters when he is performing in a contrarian manner against black conservatives. Everyone in his audience will understand this. Most of his haters who have seen any of his content will understand this as well. I'm sure he's going to still have some weird takes defending certain aspects, but he is so incredibly fucking like geared towards being contrarian. So yes, no matter what, he will absolutely fucking lutely most likely rip the black conservatives a new asshole in a way that many of you will probably agree with and maybe in some ways that he won't regardless of what you know about his background or what you know about his own perspective the worst aspect of this for me in particular or for many of you that enjoy my content is that anytime he gains like a level of prominence off of something he will inevitably use that to be like also fuck us on let's cut millions of videos about how shitty he is but no matter what happens i'm going to obviously be objective about his performance here which i assume is going to be ripping a new asshole into most of these dudes. It's history where black people try to build wealth, you, you know, with uh, the Tulsa riots and everything, yes. where, yeah, they, that this wealth has been destroyed. And something that's upsetting to me is when conservatives talk about how that's, we can't blame the past for what's happening in the present. That is true to some extent. But then the next breath, they'll talk about how important it is to have dual parent households, how important it, has, it is to have a strong family, to have responsibility passed on from parent to child. And we've seen in the past that because of racial issues, that process has been severely disrupted. The funny thing is, is that Agreeing with all these things is when I did my research when I was younger, which arrived me to my standpoint of being a conservative because I believed it was racist, Democrat, liberal ideologies and policies dating all the way back to the 1800s, all the way up to the 1960s, and then you, the purported big switch. But I think it was more so when Democrats decided to be a bit more cloak and dagger about their true opinions of black people and be more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And wait, what are Republicans doing in that situation then? I love this take. There's two ways that this could go. He he could be a, a, a Clarence Thomas style black conservative who's like, everyone's race across the board. I'm going to get mine and conservatives allow me to get mine. And at least they spit on my face directly. Whereas like white people are just as racist as like white liberals are just as racist as white conservatives. They just like will soft pedal it and, and uh, find more aesthetically appropriate ways of criticizing me, a black man. Now, I quite literally talked about this in the earlier subject that we were covering. One of the very famous ways that white liberals in particular engage in like super racist uh, commentary is by pointing to the exact same structures of oppression that exist in every community, including white communities, of course, as a singular thing that black men engage in. I like to call it the, the uh, root.com uh, style academic criteria criteria, which is when people will be like, yeah, black men are horrifically aggressive towards gay people or trans people or uh, black women. And that in and of itself is, of course, a phenomena that exists in every community, but singling out black people and then making it seem as though it's a issue specifically with black men or a part of black culture in and of itself is just a more appropriate way, a more civil way for the same kind of white supremacist attitudes and sentiments to be expressed by liberals as well as uh, racist white people on the Republican side of the spectrum. It's just still stereotyping. It's just done in a more like a uh, liberal way. Now that we talked about that, let's continue. Uh, secretive and more, oh, we want to help you by, you know, doing these things and seeing them as a doing barrier. Doing what things? Uh, affirmative action, welfare, all sorts. <laughs> Is he wearing a Hunter Biden hat? I love that. Okay, I like this guy immediately. So the wait, that welfare. So ruin our culture and places where we are now. So but, giving. But, but I want. I want. to get back to the history of it because we're talking. Well, I just want to make sure we're clear. Giving them money hurt them, right? Is that what you're a, saying? Well, yes, giving them because if your father's out of the home, that's when we give you the money. 
if you're living yeah, in this so, housing, so then give them the money while the dad's in the home. Well, then give them the money while the dad's in the home. If you're working so this give amount them of hours the, and getting blessed in this amount of That's such a good response. Holy shit. So he's like, okay, give them money while the dad's in the home. You're dollars, throwing, you're getting money you're from the baby. Yes, it is incentivizing. You're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I don't even know what that means in this scenario because, yes. You're throwing. Okay, you want to talk about throwing baby? Dude, he is getting. Dude, oh my God, this is fucked up. This is racist. You can't have a, a, a black teenager on to get fucking eviscerated by a bunch of white people like this. That's racist, man. Jubilee, we're two minutes in, and this, this kid is getting fucking eviscerated. That is so messed up. This is a hate crime, I think. Messed up. Jubilee's racist. I'll say it. I mean, if, if anything, is child abuse, okay? 100%. Okay, let me break this down Margaret for you. Sanger wanted to exterminate the black, black race because she thought they were weeds. So yeah, we can literally talk about throwing the baby out with the bathwater. That's okay. what Margaret Sanger, that's what Democrat policies wanted to do. <laughs> what is he doing? He's doing the talking point. He went, Biden had is in the chat. Oh, it's, oh, it's Alec Gunter. Oh shit. I remember you. Who's that handsome guy in the red shirt of the Hunter Biden hat? Thanks for saying you like me. I'm in the Frankie shirt. Hello, that's me, man. Re. Oh yeah. Nice. Okay, well, you, you fucked up. You're racist, by the way. You can't be, you can't be destroying him that quickly you just you literally had one ready in the fucking chamber dog what is happening you know dial it back a little bit anyway having said that immediately as soon as he got like overwhelmed with such a simple fact which is oh is welfare ruining single family parents uh, or creating single family homes in the black community there's two avenues you can go to which is one why is it not ruining white families then or why is there uh, a higher percentage of welfare recipients in the black community versus the white community? If that's the case, maybe there's some systemic reasons as to why that is that is happening. Or the alternative, which Alec did, is much better in my opinion, which is, okay, well then why won't we just give money to parents in general uh, and not only single family households? To my people. So Let's... that's why I feel so strongly about it because it is these policies that date back centuries that were built off of the death and poverty of my people. Let's take a breath. So I'm breathing. Okay. So a lot of babies aren't, but aren't, I am, oh. sadly. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of babies when, aren't. When I say throw the baby out with the bathwater, you want to completely get rid of welfare, okay? Or at least the conser I don't want to put that on you. You haven't said that, but the conservative apparatus does, clearly. So giving money to a group of people does not hurt them. I mean, it sure, can't. you're talking about a lottery. You just literally hey, take can't. money. But yes. there, are, there are strings take attached money. to that money. Take all the there money. There are strings attached to that money. Give them millions. Money. Make them all millionaires. I don't care. Giving money to black people does not hurt them. And that, and ha that has that. not happened, though. That has not happened. What, what do you mean? That has not happened. Giving, no. it's, it, it hasn't been a reparation. You're saying get, it hasn't been this so or that. What I, it has you're been saying, a welfare program, welfare Great was Societies Act, that welfare was built was, off of the idea of, hey, we get these families split up. We get these so people So then let them here. keep the family together and keep all the money. I mean, there you go. I guess Boom, so, done. but I'm, I guarantee you there, I guess there is so. no way Why that would Why would you not advocate for that? So in your, I guess, research. Dude, that's such a good way to fucking destroy him right out of the gate. Oh my God. At that moment, when you can't concede, you're doing it purely because you're debating and you can't like this is why debates are fucking bullshit for the most part he can't concede because that's weakness that's losing the debate but like of course that is the most reasonable thing to say in that situation if you care about black people as a black person doesn't matter if you're fucking black conservative or not you can't literally sit there and be like no you're fucking wrong it would be bad now here's the thing the black conservative that is at least writ, uh, read enough thomas sowell have a a better retort which would be to relegate back to the classic conservative tropes of well Actually, welfare across the board, not just for black people, but everyone is making them lazy, right? Welfare is making everybody lazy. What about opportunities? Or what about, uh, you know, fucking welfare uh, stopping motivation dead in his tracks? Stuff like that. Now, I'm sure Alec, being a 26-month Hassan Abi head, already knows exactly what the retort to that is as well. But at least you're continuing the conversation without conceding. This country and everything, um, do you find, like, the Reconstruction era and, like, the failures of, like, what it wanted to be and then what it ended up being um and then which led into you know which it, you know had downstream effects to, to enter into the jim crow era and bro there ain't no way there are two motherfuckers with one piece posters on this there ain't no fucking way two what's happening you know you have policies like redlining that influence you know how schools are funded the downstream effects of slavery do you think um put black people as ge and generally in a worse off position than 
white Americans. I think generation by generation, the effects of slavery have been diluted, but generation by generation, the effects of racism, welfare-based policies, and things of that nature became even more great. So in the 18... 80s or so when we had our first black members of Congress, which were indeed Republicans, I think that was a great start for things. But obviously we had terrible things that happened like the Tulsa massacre uh, among you know black people being chased out of their homes by the KKK. Sure. All funded by the Democrat Party, all supported by the Democrat okay, Party. Well, I, I mean, I need to stop you. Dude, I love this. I love this. He's like, the only time black people were fucked over in this country was when it was the Dixiecrats doing. Bro, who fucking cares what party they're a part of? They're white supremacists, dumbass. Like, yeah, okay. They were in the fucking Democratic Party. This is where liberalism and like defending liberalism or, or defending the Democratic Party inevitably fall short of what is necessary. It's like, yeah, sure. Yeah, they were fucking racist. Like, what do you mean? Fine. I, I agree with that. We're not fucking playing in a team. Like, I'm not a part of that fucking team, dog. I'm not trying to defend this team. You know what I mean? It's so incredibly stupid when people are just like, yeah, uh, the Democrats did this in, uh, you know, 1800s. And it's like, okay, even if you don't believe that there was a party switch, okay, or the Southern strategy is fake, let's say, who is has a confederate flag bumper sticker on their truck when they're going over to drive and and vote for a fucking republican it's republicans it's not fucking democrats that are doing that shit republican politicians right now in present day american society are unironically defending the rights of confederate generals and and the right to be celebrated as though that's a right even though it's not a right like what the fuck it makes no sense you have to be literally a fucking idiot to be like yeah, no, I think Democrats are still, they're still funding the Klan. It's like, okay, well, why are the fucking Klansmen running on the Republican Party ticket? There was a literal fucking Nazi in Illinois that like won a quarter of the vote, like an actual Nazi, like out and about. I'm saying like he was a part of the American Nazi party and he ran in Illinois for the Republican seat and he won 25% of the fucking vote, dog. The fuck do you mean? Why is he not running on the Democratic Party ticket then? Can you attribute not? to the party but to the ideology because I think when you think regardless of what it, whatever the party switch was traditionally conservative values did not like that's more aligned with um, you know uh, the preservation uh, of slavery more racist policies it's in very this country difficult like to very compare 2020s conservatism to 1880s conservatism Wait, I, did, I don't get it. Like, was Abraham Lincoln conservative or not? Explain that to me. Like, okay, Abraham Lincoln, Republican Party. Is he conservative? Why is it the charter saying that they want to fucking abolish chattel slavery in the South and wage slavery in the North? Like, what's happening there? So, personally, I feel like there's really only one thing that white people have a true advantage over black people with, and it's that white people are less likely to be forced into a box. It happens with black people onto other black people, but it especially happens with- Yeah, yeah, that's right. I wonder why. Wait, hold on. I, I feel I feel like this guy is going to deny systemic racism, right? Because he's a, a conservative. But like what he just described is one of the literal symptoms of systemic racism. If you are a part of a marginalized group, yes, you are boxed in to stereotypes. Stereotypes that are negative. Stereotypes that often justify your uh, conditions of oppression. Extrapolate that over hundreds of years and you literally arrive at the material foundation for systemic racism. Thank you, that's great. Thank you for the Prager U lesson. Prager you guy that is just simply there as like a normal black conservative. With white liberals onto black conservatives where we are told that we are supposed to think a certain way, be a certain way, and if we're not, then we're called all these names like etc. And the worst of all is bootlicker. Because I hate when a white liberal tells me as a black man that I'm a bootlicker. Because then I ask whose boot am I licking? Because you're telling me as a white person that me as a black person. You're, what do you mean? Y you are licking the boots of white supremacy. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what, what's the point? What? Bro, this is why I do end up triggering a lot of way more conscious people on Twitter, especially whenever I talk about black conservatives, because they think I'm like reigniting white supremacist aspects to like dunk on like a black guy. And it's like a go ahead or something. It's not, I don't give a fuck what people say. If you are a conservative, doesn't matter if you're black. Okay. If you're a conservative, you can't fucking turn around and do identity politics. You're like, huh, you're a white man. You're a white man calling me a black guy, a bootlicker, uh, slavery much. Uh, it's like, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. You're a conservative. Be a fucking man. You cannot do that. I hate 
when these motherfuckers on the conservative camp literally turn around and they're just like, oh, little old me, I'm over here justifying white supremacy as a black man and you're denying me of my autonomy as a black man. It's called bodies in spaces, sweaty. Look it up like, shut the fuck up. Shut up. There's no bodies in spaces here. You are an agent of white supremacy. Who gives a fuck? That guy has six cop friends and I called him a bootlicker, but they clipped it out. They cut out the part where he says he has six cop friends. And in response, I pointed that out to him. And he said they are six very clean sets of boot right now. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I love the other part of this where it's like black conservatives love being like the only racism is when people say that I'm like, uh, you know, an agent of white supremacy, but in a like more embellished way. No one is giving anybody the go ahead to like call you the N word or something. Okay. That's unacceptable or variants of that. That's unacceptable. Bootlicker, on the other hand, is not like historically anti-black, which is a perfectly valid way to roll you because that's precisely what you're doing. And that I'm licking your boot because I don't think in this box that you want me to frame my mentality in, <laughs> yes. that to me is real racism. And that's what we need to stop allowing to happen to us because black people are so quick now to not branch out and to have new ways of thinking or to go into careers like agriculture and these other career paths that black people don't typically get into. It's not because of racism stopping them from getting in there. It's it's because we're told for so long that you have to follow this path and you have to think a certain way. I think. Wait, what? Bro, did he say black people were not cast out from participating in agriculture? Are you fucking nuts? Wait, what? That's like the worst one you could pick. And no, I'm not doing like a like a like a slavery joke or something that that would be incredibly out of touch and probably racist. I'm talking very specifically, black people were forced out of farming, okay? In the abolition of slavery, the only time black people were able to participate in, in agricultural output was, was literally around sharecropping and not having... Uh, like not unironically owning land. They, 40 acres and a fucking mule were a promise given to freed slaves that was not followed on. The only reparations that were given in the United States of America literally was given to white farmers or white landowners who owned slaves. It was the it was a payment of restitution for the slaves that were forcibly freed. I think America is a great place for a black person. I think I'm an American. Anything that's available to you is available to me and mine. I've personally never experienced white people having way more privileges than me. Like, <laughs> I'm sure you could find certain institutions where black people are treated differently. But in general, I don't think that I've missed out on anything because of being black. And if anything, it's given me more of a voice because people will want to hear what I say now because I'm black. <laughs> so if anything, it, I have more of a platform now just on the basis of being a black conservative and saying what's not popular than I would if I was just a white person who was also conservative. Wait, you can't do that. No, no, you just admitted it. What? You just gave the game away. No, she literally recognizes. She's like, yeah, if I was a fucking, if I was some random white chick, like, you know, there's plenty of them out there. But like, if I become the token, then like, I get way more options, like way more opportunity. That's so funny. Why does she admit that? At least she's like open about it, I guess. There's like a weird, weirdly enough, there's like a clarity there, you know? She just straight up said it. I have more of a platform. Niche individual media careers have solved racism. <laughs> Dude, that is literally the conservative affirmative action. Conservatives are like, I hate affirmative action. And then they're like, we need to elevate some black people because, uh, you know, we, we need to hear a black person's perspective uh, defending white supremacy. <laughs> decision to end affirmative action. I think... I'm not going to start. Someone else can start. Sorry. I think, I think affirmative action has served its purpose. I think that it was necessary for a particular time. And I think that every black person knows how to get into college. Every black, I mean, you could pull out the, the names, the Oprah, the oh, President Obama. You can pull out the, the head of Time Warner was black man. The Forbes was black man. We know what to do now. We don't need a... What the fuck? What are they? What? What's happening? <laughs> affirmative action anymore. And to me, affirmative action is offensive sometimes, especially nowadays, because um, I have six children and uh, two boys, four girls. And uh, <clears throat> all of them went to Harvard and Columbia and this one and that one. And it would it breaks my heart to think that they uh, accomplished their that. Yeah. Wait, what? That's like, how do you not understand that like conservatives are lying? Wait, that's so dumb. That's so dumb. Lady, your children deserve to go to those fucking schools. Are you stupid? How did you not understand your very own children? deserve to go to those schools and you're like and everybody thinks that like they deserve to go to those schools in only because of affirmative action it's like 
Yeah, no shit. That happened during affirmative action, which means if you personally believe that your children deserve to go to Harvard, you can't be anti-affirmative action. What the fuck? This makes no sense. That's so stupid. Unless she literally is about to say, like, my kids are fucking dumbasses. Like, they literally took a white person's spot or some shit. Goal of getting to, into these institutions just because of the color of their skin. I can definitely say that it creates a lot of tension when you have affirmative action. I remember my first week at the university. No, fucking idiot. The tension is not affirmative action. The tension is white supremacy. That's it. That's the tension. What is wrong with these people? They're literally like, oh, no, nah, it's the it's the one fucking Band-Aid that, like, liberals were able to live with for, like, a shelf life, of course, that allowed, like, just a tiny marginal leg up for certain people that were plucked from unique backgrounds in order to create a more diverse learning environment, which is good for everybody involved. That part actually is fucking not the, that part is the problem, not the white supremacy that reinforces the dynamic that black people are not worthy of being in that position. Oh my God, dude. It's definitely not white supremacy. It's the affirmative action that made people racist, my man, for sure. Maybe he has to live with that. Maybe he has to, to fucking uh, believe that internally because like, otherwise he has to recognize that like every single person is probably him up in his career in the conservative media ecosystem is a racist piece of shit. <sighs> University of Illinois, I was sitting with some classmates and- Guys, these guys aren't racist. Like Dennis Prager, not racist. It's just the systems that have caused them to behave this way. A white student turned to me and jokingly like, hey, Xavier, like, did you just attach a smiley face when you applied for this college? And I started asking what he meant. And he said to me that he was like, you're black. I'm assuming you had decent grades. You could have just attached a smiley face and you would have gotten into the university. So I was livid by that and I went off. Again, another, okay, Xavier doing the same thing that the black lady did. Once again, don't hyper focus on the individual act of racism that Xavier a microaggression that Xavier uh, had to go through maybe more than a microaggression focus on the underlying point that he's making he's like I deserve to go to this college because I worked really hard and then people think I got here due to affirmative action that idea that that you have to have enough processing power to, to recognize that in that very moment, you're like, wait, I didn't get here because of affirmative action. I got here because I worked fucking hard. Hold on. Maybe that is the case for every single person and that the conservative media is greatly overgeneralizing and hyping up the impact that affirmative action has had in an effort to uh, cut white supremacist propaganda, but not directly by saying we should segregate schools. No, it's probably not that. Thank you for the fucking $100,000 a year job, Dennis Prager. You can't be a black person who's like, oh, dude, what the fuck? Like, I hate affirmative action. And, and simultaneously be like, I deserve to be in this college. You know what I mean? Do you think that in the absence of affirmative action, that racist white people are not going to find a new and unique and creative way to be racist to you? That's another take as well that I have to ask. It's like whenever people say like porn is the reason why people, women get like hurt so much. It's like, yeah, dude, in a pre-porn universe, like famously, women had a really good time. Like no domestic violence whatsoever. It's definitely porn that did that. Thank you. I started naming all my accomplishments and I felt so confident only for about an hour. Cause then an hour later, I started saying to myself like, wow, like did I actually earn my way in here? I started to have this mm. insecurity and I started wondering to myself, did I earn this position myself or did my ancestors suffering earn this for me? My controversial opinion on this matter is that it's good that the Supreme Court actually ended affirmative action only because colleges are still going to do the same exact uh, measurements that they have, okay? They're still going to do the same shit because they want a diverse learning environment. That is literally the fucking point. That is the entire point of like leaving your dumbass cousin fucking podunk town or your dumbass Martha's Vineyard ass rich ass fucking neighborhood to go to goddamn college. They don't don't want Harvard to be exclusively white people because even if you are going to become a war criminal later down the line, as many Harvard education recipients do become, you still need to learn about that shit in an environment that is diverse where you can at least like work around black people without like blurting out the most racist shit possible because that is what America is. America is a very diverse country. One of the most diverse nations on the planet, as a matter of fact. It don't fucking matter. You need to get a level of DEI and colleges know that and that's precisely the reason why they're like, yeah, shut the fuck up. Oh yeah. Oh no. You took down affirmative action. And I'm willing to bet that they're still going to have similar fucking percentages where they have a holistic approach to their admissions process, which is completely reasonable and that they are going to find either other ways, maybe a class-based affirmative action or, which would be great by the way, totally desirable, 
or just the same exact fucking uh, metrics that they have for admissions, which end up creating like identical demographics in uh, in the applicant process, in the applicants that were accepted in the college. Because the reality is affirmative action is not a fucking like literal solution to racism. If anything, it's like, it's, it's a mechanism so that like people who want to churn out white supremacist, capitalist, systemic violence can learn in an environment that's diverse enough so they can do it better, okay? That's it. I don't think affirmative action is the worst thing considering all the different types or aspects of a background you might take into account when somebody's getting into college, whether they were in certain clubs, you know, Boy Scouts, what type of classes they took that might not be available to everybody. I don't think that factoring in the affirmative action is necessarily a bad thing, but I feel like because of everything you guys have said, the optics behind it are so horrible today that even if it is slightly beneficial in the long run for certain people, I think we can probably refocus most of that into- God, I hate liberals so much. Oh my God. First of all, he basically just said what I said jokingly, but the difference is he's serious about it and he's willing to say affirmative action should be ended. But it's fucking frustrating because it's like, who gives a fuck? If it's just simply an optic situation, then yeah, you should, I don't know, fix it by doing a decent amount of propaganda in that direction. But nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to work anymore, except for conservatives. They're, they will work really fucking hard to fix the optics of like unimaginably bad positions. Figuring out like the class that people come from, the neighborhoods, the backgrounds or whatever, without it having to necessarily target race. The only thing that I kind of wonder now that it's gone is instead of a black person being in school thinking like, man, am I here because I'm an affirmative action pick? Is it going to be a kid that is poor or a kid that's from a different zip code? I think we should do think? away with all of it. It's just like, like, submit an application, no demographics. Why do they ask your sexuality? Like, why do they ask all that stuff? What do you mean? Bro, how do people still not understand this? Like, talk to a singular admissions person, please, dude. It's not like colleges are hiding the truth. Like, they literally are like, dog, we have a holistic admissions process because we obviously care about uh, grades and shit. But more importantly, the people, the legacy admissions that we do truly care about, we want to make sure that they're learning in a diverse environment. We want to make sure George W. Bush's son is going to get in no matter what, okay? Papa Bush, he's going to buy the wing of a library. He's at Yale. Doesn't matter how fucking stupid he is. We want to make sure that that stupid idiot is at least learning in a more diverse environment so he can become president one day, okay? That's it. That's the main point. And also on top of that, we get liberal brownie points to be like, look how fucking, look at this. Look how great we are. Look how woke we are. But ultimately it's a good thing because it benefits everybody. You pluck a couple people from different backgrounds that due to uh, financial hangups and systemic racism may or may not have been able to be in the selections process on paper because on paper they still have great grades because it's not like a black uh, uh, kids with like who are getting F's all year round or being like put into Harvard instead of a guy who's an A plus college student who's white and they're like fuck you white kid like you're not getting in or like oh fuck you Asian kid who studied really hard we're gonna get this fucking dumbass black kid here like that's not how it works that's just like that's made up and that's precisely why the black conservative Conservatives on that fucking panel are like, my children worked really hard to get to the position that they got to, and they literally didn't even fucking, they, everyone said they got there because of affirmative action, that's why we need to end it. It's like, yeah, you just admitted that it's fucking bullshit. You just admitted as a black conservative that the conservative line on affirmative action is bullshit. Anyway, let's keep going. So, if affirmative action accomplished its purpose, why do we still see the disparities that we do in the professional workplace? If you average white wealth, and compare it to black wealth totals, white people as a whole have about 50 times greater wealth than black people as a whole uh, per capita. So I just don't understand why you think affirmative action has accomplished its purpose. I don't see curious. that. Um, why do you assume that just because there is a disparity means it's because of a racial issue? What else would it be from? I mean, no. Upbringing, economic abilities, desire skills. to go, desire to. I mean, so zip code does play then. a lot. If you grow up in a neighborhood that experiences a lot of trauma, you're not as likely to do as well in school. There ain't no fucking way. Black conservatives defend conservatism without being like inherently racist. Challenge impossible difficulty because it is literally impossible. Like they they just sat there and literally went, yeah, it's because we have a different culture that's like inferior. That's a wild thing to say. What are you saying? We're just we just culturally are inferior and don't. Don't have any desire for success like that's an insane thing to say you're a black person why are you saying that black conservatives are so permanently one note because like the entire purpose in the eyes of like uh conservatives and the conservative movement as a whole is to like build that racial gap and be like you're the black face on white supremacy now you're gonna say the same shit 
because you believe the same shit that I believe, right? But it's like, it's way better that you say it because then other people feel less racist about saying it, right? Clandis Owens. They are so fucking one note that they forget that there are people around them that are going to go, hold up, what are you saying right now? You're, you just say that like there is a racial component to like there's a cultural inferiority across the board on the entire black race like what that's just that's if a white person says that you know you're conditioned into understanding like oh that's just like a guy being racist just don't understand why you think affirmative action has accomplished its purpose i don't see curious that. um why do you assume that just because there is a disparity means it's because of a racial issue what else would it be from i mean no upbringing, economic abilities, Desire skills. to go, desire to... I mean, so zip code does play then. a lot. If you grow up in a neighborhood that experiences a lot of trauma, you're not as likely to do as well in school, which means you're... Why did they grow up in a... Okay, that's great. Oh, Alec, good job. Holy shit. that experiences a lot of trauma. I mean, lots of people do. Yes, but why trauma. specifically do more black people? Uh, government assistance programs. Government assistance programs? Like yeah. what? Try redlining. I mean, you can go into that if you'd like to, but let's take a look relevant. at... Uh, the Great <gasps> Societies Act, which was... Bro, come on, dude. Come on, come on. You're not going to fucking do the Ben Shapiro line on redlining, right? Like, financial institutions were perfectly valid in not giving black people loans because they think that black people are, what, culturally inferior and can't fucking pay their loans? Is that what you're going to say? That's the Ben Shapiro justification for redlining, by the way. It's like, a bank is supposed to give money to people that they think are going to pay for it. And it's like, yeah, well, that's the point. Like, that's... The banks did that, and that's racist. Something I think that this conversation illustrates is that, like, affirmative action is literally the very end of the line of a lot of different parts of a person's life. And by that point, trying to rectify all of the inequities that have existed to try to remedy any of that at the very end with affirmative action, it might just be too broad a brush. And maybe that's correct. That is correct. That's why I always say affirmative action is a band aid solution. He's right. He might be uh, the most biased demon on the fucking planet when it comes to issues that pertain to me or uh, whenever, whoever the fuck, whatever flavor of the month has like pissed them off personally. So now like every person from that marginalized background is now a villain and he will do anything and everything to be like incredibly fucking annoying about it. But he's right about this. Affirmative action is a band-aid solution. Why? Because there is a metric ton of other shit that goes wrong before you even get to that position of elevation where you can like finally go to fucking college. It's fair, but that doesn't mean you have to remove it because of optics. Yeah, no, it's just the major reason why I don't like removing an affirmative action is it's twofold. One, there are no legal protections for discrimination when that happens, or at least like it's one other aspect in the way of like implementing further legal discriminations. Okay, so that's number one. You're chipping away at it slowly, but surely that's what Republicans do. And they're just now feeling more, more confident than ever to do so. Two, it has a really shitty like, I guess, not spiritual effect, but it's it's basically just like telling black people to listen, like, we gave you this fucking Band-Aid. We bullied you with this Band-Aid to make it seem like any black pe uh, person that has risen to a position of power was, was put there, was plucked and placed there when they didn't deserve it. And then now we're taking the fucking Band-Aid away. Fuck you. And, like, what does that do? That makes, that galvanizes white supremacist perspectives in society. And it tells black people, like, double fuck you. We've been fucking you, and now here, here's another one, okay? Fuck you and fuck you. Here's, here's two of my friends. They came along for the ride. That sucks. So I do recognize that, like I said, affirmative action, band-aid solution, clearly like material restitution needs to happen. There are way bigger scars that impact the black and brown communities, impact poor communities in general. But like sometimes it's fine to have a fucking band-aid, guys. You know what I mean? It's okay. Well, when you start with a country where people only hire you if you're white, that's necessary. And I know that you said that it started good and then ended whatever. And I don't think that affirmative action was perfect by any measure, but we still see really, really bad inequality. So if you're going to get rid of affirmative action, what's the replacement? Meritocracy. Is people need to There's no ha! meritocracy. Oh God, meritocracy, a laughable concept. Get the fuck out of here. Yes, in this country. You look at Elon. Bro, that's how you know capitalism is America's fucking religion, dude. Straight up. No matter what, black, white, at a certain point when that fucking penetrates your brain, like the American capitalist brain rot, seeps in and you believe that dogma you're like meritocracy pick yourself up by your bootstraps sure Elon musk he's destroying twitter there's no air merit it's not even just elon musk how can you say there's any meritocracy in a structure where black people have literally been enslaved and no economic restitutions have been made and this conversation in and of itself is one where we are denying all of that and refusing to even like and and justifying the one fucking band-aid that we gave to black people that wasn't all that significant at all and and celebrating that we took that away 
How can you say that there's any meritocracy? Equality of opportunity has never existed in this country. It's never existed anywhere around the world, let's be real. But it hasn't even existed in this country. Well, first thing I want to bounce back to is it's not a myth that there are, like, minorities that are being put into colleges that they're not ready for. If you look at a lot of these top universities, including Harvard, Yale, et cetera, you're gonna see a lot of minorities on academic probation because they are being placed in universities that they are not ready for. They are not cut out for that just yet. That's awesome. Bro, this guy is just a racist. Holy fuck. He said black people are just not ready for Harvard. Anytime you fucking see a black conservative just say some out of pocket shit, just think for a moment how you would feel if a white person said it. Because their job there is literally to repeat an incredibly racist, incredibly white supremacist take. But because they're black, you're not immediately conditioned to be like, what the fuck? fuck did you just say i want to i want to get i want to get you on that point because i would posit that the people who are least likely to have good outcomes in an academic setting are those who have to work two jobs are those who have to drive there from home because they can't afford a dorm are those who have to go into crippling financial debt these are the and, and have other stresses in their life they can't afford a doctor they can't afford a dentist they can't afford anything i had to do so that too though those are the that's people that's not just black people it's not just but it's overwhelmingly numbers there are more white people in poverty than black white liberals who like oh man well white people suffer like that too gross me out it's like yeah we know it's a class-based problem like shut the fuck up like we're talking statistics here okay like we're talking averages we're talking like who is more likely to be in a dire economic circumstance, okay? White lady, can you please just like not fucking chime in one time? Black people. <laughs> if you look at the wrong numbers, but if the, you actually know, understand what, are the wrong what you're talking numbers? about. Yeah. No, no the number issue is poverty wrong. in general though. I don't think it's like who is in poverty. It's like poverty sucks. It's, maybe it we should matter, make college free. It? And maybe we want to have, have for actually program, wouldn't be that necessary. It'll get program, even more ghetto. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> said that. She wouldn't be that necessary. It'll, It'll get program, even more ghetto. In a different timeline, he's writing for the root and talking about how fucking homophobic black men are. This is the avenue that he found himself in, so he has to portray himself a certain way. That's it. This dude is just like a chameleon, okay? A charlatan. If things were like three percent different in his life, he would literally be writing. He'd be talking about uh, the the incredible, the violent. Uh, and, and misogynistic and, and homophobic uh, black men, which is like, again, as I mentioned, just a different way of churning out similar white supremacist talking points, but in a matter that is more acceptable to liberals. You know what I mean? He'd be doing that instead of this. People. Trump supports black lives. I mean, I would fucking, I, dude, what? I would say yes to that. First step back, baby. Donald Trump, dude, he was he was great to black people. He loves black people. <laughs> I think that President Trump supports all lives. I think that he looks at all American citizens as equal. I don't see him doing anything that would make you feel like he does not support black lives. Um, that's, of course, going to lead into the conversation of Black Lives Matter, which was a movement and an organization with so much corruption. Donald Trump not supporting that organization doesn't mean that he doesn't support black lives. It just means that he doesn't support the fraudulent organization that's stealing so much money from so many people to do absolutely nothing with it, nor does he support a destructive movement that is destroying cities, communities, lives, etc. So I don't see why someone would think that President Trump doesn't support black lives. I've heard him say uh, he knows all the best black people. He has all the best black friends. I, I do support black people all the time. Uh, so sorry, that was bro. You can't do that in public, Alec. What the fuck? This dude definitely watches it. Yeah, he is. He's in here right now. He's a, been a community member for a very long time. We've like talked uh, to him or about him in the past. I think he's a nurse, if I'm not mistaken. I might be getting that wrong. Listen, it was a swing and miss. Yeah, they kept that shit in there. Okay. It's a very bad impression, but um, <laughs> I don't think that I don't think Donald Trump wants bad things to happen to black people. So in that respect, I think he does support black lives. But the other side of that is he's not really doing anything. He didn't do anything as president, certainly, to uplift black people. The economy affects black people. Yeah, I, I certainly disagree with that point. One of the biggest things I what does he do for the economy? personally. Well, yeah. We, we, don't, we can get, we'll get into that one later. One of the biggest things he did is Wait, he, what, he why? secured permanent funding for HBCUs, one of the largest increases we ever saw for HBCUs, personally done by his administration, among many other things. The First Step Act, which, you know, there's a lot of debate about whether it was really the best thing to do, but that was definitely a, a, a kiss of love to, black, to the black race. Uh, freeing Alice Johnson for menial drug crimes she committed in the past that had her locked up. She did not get to see her family for years. 
Yeah, I, but that's not know. like, okay, I did say I agree, but I agree in the sense that Donald Trump doesn't literally want bad things to happen to black people, like I think a lot of conservatives do. So I think that he just says the most, po yeah, I do think that. I think uh, the mo he says the things that will get him elected. So I don't think that he has any personal grudges against uh, certain, you know, most people. I don't even agree with that. I, I think that he's just like, he's just as racist as every other fucking uh, person from his background would be. Like, cause he literally, he was uh, investigated for housing discrimination. You know what I mean? Like he's definitely, definitely not a good dude. He's definitely racist, but like he's uh yeah, default Amera racist. Exactly. All right, and then the Central Park Five shit, obviously, you know what I mean? Like he definitely has a bunch of, he definitely has a bunch of shit. Uh, he just has the most popular thing. So I, I think like Ron DeSantis would be, yeah, Ron DeSantis would be somebody that I think you actually think? wants black people to be hurt. So by that standard, yeah, Donald Trump supports black lives by leaps and bounds. Do you think Donald Trump says the most popular thing? Yeah. Really? Yes. Then why do so many people hate him? He got elected as president. Yes, he did. Yeah. He didn't win the popular vote. Whoa! That's a Whoa! Owned yourself though. You kind of owned yourself. Lost the the popular vote. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> I don't fully agree with Alec here. Anyway, I don't know what what trailer thought he had here. I'll be honest. Maybe not his best performance here, but it doesn't matter. That's liberal what your side to say. <laughs> That's yeah. a liberal talking. I'm helping point. you here. I, I I'm I'm trying to see the logic in this. Obviously, he says things to be to be elected as a politician, very similarly to how Joe Biden did. Except Joe Biden actually has a history of racism. <laughs> if he said things that people yeah. Yeah, whereas Donald Trump don't like get the fuck out of here, kid. Oh my god. Okay, now I, I'm I'm doing the debate brain. Bro, I'm sorry. You can't fucking be like, oh Joe Biden is so racist, but like and then act like Donald Trump isn't then. Okay. I'm sorry. That's fucking ridiculous. Like this is the only thing the first step act, which was literally a bipartisan uh crime bill, a, a, a prison reform bill, a criminal justice reform bill that you know Democrats wrote as well. Get the fuck out of here. And if it was a Democratic president that wanted to sign it, the Republicans would have vetoed it. Shut the fuck up. The only reason why it happened under a Republican president is because some of those bills only pass under Republican presidencies because Republicans are only obstructionists when a Democrat is president. People didn't like you wouldn't have been our president. So you like everything that Donald Trump says. You think everything he says is popular. I love a lot of the things he says. I think he's hilarious. When he said big water, that was one of my favorite quotes. Big water. Water, big water, ocean water. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> he has the funniest one-liner, so I love a lot of the things he says. As far as policy, he sucks, but. I'm just shocked you're wearing a Hunter Biden hat. He likes a different kind of one-line. Oh, he's, I, I know, conservatives love talking about his No, uh, Coke, it's in. different. Coke, not. Trump is less of the issue Such and a more so the people that head. support Holy him, fuck. like Die Hard. They facilitate that kind of like hate, I think, for a lot of people, not just black people, but like. I mean, this man, Put, took out like a full page in a newspaper calling for the public execution of five black kids. His hotels, all of his businesses have rampant uh, history of denying black people apartments or whatever. So I forgot about that. I, I just, should not have stepped forward. Uh, look, I mean, Donald Trump cares about Donald Trump. Um, so I don't think he really cares about anyone, I guess, unless you're like super rich or whatever. When you look at his history on racial issues, whether it's the shithole countries comment, the plethora of comments he made about Mexican people, um, I, just the comments he's made about Muslims, the idea that Trump cares a, at all about some particular racial minority, I think is a little bit silly. I think Trump will say whatever he needs to say to rile up his base and to get elected. I don't necessarily think those statements come from a place of hatred. I don't think he was ever saying specifically, oh, if if you pray five times a day towards- Wait, I don't get it. Hold up. How can you say Mexicans are rapists in a non-hateful way? That's wild. How can you say black people come from shithole countries? Why can't we get immigration from good countries like Norway, but like say it in a not racist and not hateful way? You can't say that. God damn it, dude. What a fucking insane take. Oh yeah, yeah. the east or towards Omega based on wherever you are, you're a bad person. I think he was saying if you like to fly planes into towers or behead people or throw people off of buildings, maybe you're not the most virtuous person out there. I, I supported Trump because um, all he, he- Yeah, bro. The problem is saying all Muslims want to do that. What the fuck? is wrong okay well i can't really fault him he is literally a kid he's got a kid brain i know it's identical to like what adult conservatives argue or how adult conservatives argue because adult conservatives also have kid brain but he's like literally a baby so maybe it's it's a little different overall it's a, it's a wild thing to say and he thought about how can i make america great for me and in making a man and, and and I thought you know what I'm gonna go with this guy and the reason I'm gonna go with this guy is because if he can make America great for it and he can make that it rise for everybody I'm gonna benefit from that so that's why I went and that's why I voted for him that's why I supported him but how does that specifically benefit black people again he has 
he's a businessman, but he's also a racist businessman, like well documented so. So like, I just. Uh, and Biden's you? not. <laughs> yeah, see, this is why it's like, yeah, everybody's racist, but Trump is like sometimes extra racist. You know what I mean? But like Biden's racist too. Fuck Biden. I'll, I'll, Biden's I'll not. When, yes, when he Biden, is. He yeah. created yeah. the crime okay. bill. So, so that's, but that's, that's regardless of the well, point. Address the central park five. That's what you brought up, right? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Well, he took actually, that full page out okay. They were so, so I haven't he wanted dealt. them to be killed, <laughs> well, executed just because they were black. That story. And he, he, yeah. He bars people from attending his businesses or like renting apartments from all his like stupid Trump towers. I just like. I think Trump at that point was like many people in this room, particularly liberals, a victim of the media. I think he was scared. I think he what? was ashamed of the things that he heard in the news and wanted to take action himself as a businessman, not as a Why racist. are you infantilizing him? I also, I don't like also real Bro, Trump was like three times this little fucking goober's age at that point when he said like, like those teenagers should be executed. What is he saying? Oh, Trump was a little, he, Trump was a neurodivergent minor. You don't understand. He's a little baby. He didn't know any better. Real quick, because people keep bringing up this comparison to the 93 crime bill from Biden. That crime bill, this was at the height of like violent crime and the crack epidemic in the United States. The Congressional Black Caucus supported that crime yes. bill. Everybody in the United States supported oh that crime God, bill. Oh my God, The I idea that, that that crime bill was like some racist piece of legislation that Biden was just wheeling out. Yeah, you know who was a Congressional Black Caucus supported? Fucking Hillary Clinton over Barack Obama. That doesn't mean anything, okay? I hate that justification. The Congressional Black Caucus is a Democratic Party cutout. That's it. Like, they care about what the Democratic Party is saying and doing. They don't give a shit. That's not like a good representation, in my opinion, of the attitude at the time. And even then, saying, well, everybody fucking thought it was like a, a necessity is it, not exactly great when like, we know the impact of the bill itself. You know what I mean? I guess if you're trying to justify it by saying like, oh, Joe Biden wasn't racist for the crime bill, it's like, well, he, he certainly was. My political beliefs have changed from the past. I grew up in a conservative household, actually, in Ohio. And uh, my parents were always pretty political, so I, mean, uh, I always stayed political. I was very religious uh, as a teenager. Typical. Uh, sometime during college and then afterwards, especially during COVID, um, my sister actually indoctrinated me into uh, a more leftist uh, position. And uh, Shouts out to Alex's sister. I overcorrected a little bit. I started becoming pretty cringy as far as like, you know, sit down and let, you know, let the minorities all talk, right? Um, don't say anything, don't speak over them, et cetera. They would, you know, it was like the whole, you can't speak over Candace Owens, even if she's literally a Nazi kind of thing. So um, I, <laughs> I, I stand by that. So um, <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of leveled out thankfully and I'm less cringe now. Did and you? Are you? I cringed. Yeah. This is yeah. leveled out. Imagine if we would have been here a year ago. You yeah. can, yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe I am being cringe, who cares? I, I um, so I, Grew up conservative, but I did have more left-leaning ideas about like bl Black Lives Matter and critical race theory. It's great, man. Hey, hey, good job winning over this fucking group, Destiny. You did it. <laughs> so dumb. And I was kind of, I was watching a lot of YouTube <laughs> and, you know, I did agree that black people were oppressed and all of these different things and that we were kind of got the short end of the stick. And um, during 2020, when there was, you know, everything crazy was happening and I started uh, organizing rallies against uh, the mandates because I thought that they were just totally- Oh, there it is. Bro, there it is, dude. Oh God, 2020 broke so many people's brains, some for the better and many for the worse. Oh my Lord. Totally unconstitutional and un-American. And then George Floyd dies. And initially I was like enraged like everybody else. And then it started to become this weird like, um, political like agenda masquerading or behind his face <laughs> like it just the face of what was actually happening started to peel off my mom is pretty liberal my she married my stepdad when i was like 15 16 in high school and he's super conservative like loved trump diehard trump fan and um they had a lot of like back and forth hearing the two sides like people who are on such polar opposites just like argue all the time about stuff seeing that there's a lot of similarities in both sides like the far radical left and the far radical right they have a lot of similarities they just don't want to come in yeah no totally like uh let me give you examples for example uh as a far leftist guy okay i believe that we should have universal health care a national health care system as a matter of fact i'll take it one step further uh we should have free college and the far right don't want 
want any of those things. So it's pretty similar in in many ways. Like, uh, or maybe they want um, ethnic cleansing, uh, depending on how far right you're going, which is pretty similar to like uh, offering free university education to everyone unconditionally, and also uh, making people pay uh, a, their fair share in taxes, which the right, the far right doesn't, which is very similar to the far left, I think, in many ways. That's basically the same thing because I'm a fucking idiot. I'm the dumbest person you've ever encountered and I believe these things. Fuck! At least the fucking black conservatives are like very clearly grifting. You know what I mean? What the hell? Like they are obviously there to grift or maybe they just like have genuinely believed this dumb shit. It's like, how do you believe this? I oh, yeah, never mind. I started off actually kind of similar to you. I went to a Jesuit high school. Um, I grew up very conservative. My mom uh, is Cuban, so ride or die Bush supporter who is now a ride or die um, Trump supporter. I think the point of my life when I was the most like libertarian was probably the lowest point of my life. The far radical left, what they imagine to mean is the annoying rich la rad libs who don't want any economic justice. The thing the Trump supporter and Biden supporter have in common is the exact opposite of what centrist in politics espouse. It's economic leftism that has very little actual purchase in the political class. Yes. And it also, unfortunately, has not been able to captivate enough people due to their material uh, hangups to, to go out and like vote. People are not like... If you're looking at it, if I put my fucking, you know, pollster Andy fucking hat on for a brief moment, the unfortunate reality is that, like, Bernie Sanders, for example, has not been able to captivate people with that message due to a, a shit ton of, you know, anti-media, uh, anti-Bernie media, and all this other stuff. But that is the unfortunate reality. Like, people don't fucking respond to that on, a mes on the messaging front. And even if they do, I don't know how the fuck... Uh, I don't know how you would ever uh, uh, be able to to push that uh, legislative agenda because we do not live. There is no real democratic process, and and this is a bourgeois democracy. Let's like hear what else he has to say. And I think it's because something that conservatives do really well is they make you feel like you can always like succeed as long as you work hard enough. And that's something that progressives and liberals suck at. That you're a victim of systemic racism. You're black, so you're going to be discriminated against. You're a woman, so nobody's going to care about your feelings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas Republicans will tell you, listen, if you work hard, you can do whatever you want. Like just as long as you're willing to put in the work. And and I felt that way up to the moment where I was losing my house, where I had an ex-girlfriend that was pregnant, where I had been fired from my previous job. There was a whole bunch of horrible stuff going on in my life. And I very, very luckily got into online content creation. And from there, as I started to make more money, I started to pay more taxes. When I get older and I look at taxes that come out of my paycheck, um, I just, I mean, I care a little bit, but it was just so funny to me that back when I was making 15, 20,000 a year, I'm like, I gotta vote for the lower tax bracket, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm barely paying any tax anyways. And you know, now that I'm older, like if the government wants to take, you know, a few, you know, 10, 20, whatever, how many more thousand dollars out. You just said you worked hard. So I did, but I got very, very, very lucky doing so. Yeah, he's right about this part as well. Obviously that like meritocracy clearly is a fucking lie. Luck plays a tremendous role in this. Again, I agree. Hard work is very important. I talk about this all the fucking time. I work very hard. There's one thing you cannot shit on me over. It is how hard I goddamn work, maybe to a detriment, to a fault. But that is not the end all be all. There is also a tremendous amount of luck that factored into my success. It's just the truth. And it's very frustrating when people are just like pure denialists of uh, and and will advocate for the myth of meritocracy, especially when they're on the especially where, when they're on the receiving end of uh, of the ass fucking. Anyway, um, he's not wrong. Uh, left Leftism feels hopeless. At least you say stuff like unionizing will lead to blah, blah, blah. But you know, it's not. It's very nice to think that it, my actual hard work will pay off. But your actual hard work will pay off. Leftism, at the end of the day, is about understanding why society is designed a certain way to churn out certain outcomes. It doesn't mean that that should stop you. It's more so, here is your starting position. You can fucking complain about it all day, every day. Or you can be the change you want to see in the world and at least make incremental gains in bettering your life, bettering your, uh, bettering the, the lives of those around you through engaging in the act of collective bargaining, doing something uh, uh, by, by unionizing, unionizing your workplace, creating a system in the, in the words of, of train wrecks, okay? Yeah, I mean, this is a great example, actually. I think people just don't think that politics can do anything to change people's lives because it's been like two generations. Anything good happen for the government? I agree. Uh, union pilots just got a 47% raise this year because of their strong union. UPS full-time drivers making 170 grand a year. A better world is possible, folks. Exactly. Also, union participation is still at that fucking disgusting 10%, unfortunately, in the United States of America. However, the positivity is at an all-time high. People do view unions right now in a more positive way than they have uh, in, in the last... Very lucky. Do you think it's just luck? It's not just luck, but the difference is that born into a wealthier family, you can make so many more mistakes in life. And when 
when you're born poor, you get like one or two before your life is over. And that's really sad to me. Yeah, so I used to be a liberal. I voted for Bernie Sanders in 2016, as much as I regret that now. Um, my family was pretty Wait, what do you mean you regret? Why? Like, even you could be a Trump guy and still like Bernie Sanders, for the record. Well, I guess you can't be a Trump guy who's like, praise you, Trump. You know what I mean? Because praise you, checks come in and you can't be fucking talking about big government. I mean, get the hell out of here. Some of the people in my family were like radically left, like would refer to white people as blue eyed, red headed devils, things of that nature. <laughs> and as I got older, I true I actually started being really outspoken for blm i was supposed to be on a reality wow. show teaching people how to be a blm activist at the time i did a deep dive on blm and i started to realize all that's so gross god i hate this fucking i hate this medium he literally doesn't realize he said oh reality i was that's how much of a grifter he's been i was so fucking right when i said that this guy was like three if things were like three percent different in his life he would have been a dude who was talking about how like uh black people hate gay people okay i'm not even kidding i'm not even joking i fucking nailed it from the jump he was doing a fucking reality tv show where he's educating people on black lives matter get the fuck out of here dude yeah this guy is just like you know they started paying my paychecks and i realized it's a better way to fucking go than uh, than in the other direction of being like another type of grifter all of these lies so then i took a step back i'm like okay what else am i being lied to about and i started looking at the democratic party and questioning my own loyalty to being on the left i personally think both sides tend to be racist in different ways <laughs> um i don't think the government is on the side of the people when in general yeah. and that's just me being you know a radical uh, when I was young I used to jump for joy and say oh yeah Obama black president that's so amazing he's the same color as me but when what I do you mean when you were young you are literally a fetus like what what do you when you were a zygote like what, what are we talking here when I was protein okay before I was in my father's ball sack uh, you know I would jump for joy for Obama it's like bro you are literally like eight right now what the fuck do you mean I started to do more research one of the biggest things I was confused about is well why is he a Democrat what is a Democrat? I did more research about the Democrat Party, and sure, you guys are going to pop off about the head saying, oh, there's a party switch in the Southern strategy and all these things. Which is true. Which you may say is true. I don't believe it is true at all. You're I wrong. understand, you know, you may think I'm wrong. You are. However, one of the biggest questions I have is why is... <laughs> I say you are. Reparations are necessary. When we talk about reparations, I think reparations in the way that a lot of people think of it, where we just give it to black people. I'm not an expert on this, but I think it would be more income-based and that in itself, like I said earlier, uh, would uh, disproportionately benefit black people because if you recognize that they are disproportionately uh, affected uh, by a systemic injustice, then doing it on like a class level would uplift proportionally more black people than white people. There needs to be, I think, reparations. I don't care really what form it comes from. Uh, I think free health care, uh, free college, so that everyone has like an equal opportunity to, um, uh, to educate themselves, to build a better life for themselves. Um, so it's sort of like, uh, and I think um, Germany is also a perfect model to follow, um, you know, by uh, don't, issuing, first of all, a formal apology, uh, which we haven't even done that. Um, but also just like uh, um, donating to like different uh, funds and, you know, just I think a more equitable society striving for that is uh, reparations in and of itself. Germany is not a perfect model to follow. Do not follow Germany's example. <laughs> yeah, listen. I mean, I love these conversations because like it's just never going to happen because of how insanely racist America is. Like how unimaginably racist America is. But the reality is it, it's just, it is ridiculous. This conversation is a ridiculous conversation to be had. Like if we're not talking about like what is possible for a brief moment, if we're talking about like purely in the purely hypothetical conversation that it is, it is the correct thing to do. And I'm not even talking about like what mechanisms of delivery you can engage in. Like, are we talking councils designed specifically to take a lump sum of cash and then distribute it to programs like education and, and social safety nets or direct cash compensation or maybe a combination of the two? You know what I mean? If reparations are not possible, then why the fuck did we pay reparation to white landowners? Oh, sorry. I, I meant reparations are not possible to for black people. Reparations were very possible for, for white slave owners. It, it happened, as you also correctly pointed out. England was literally still, I think, paying reparations or they were paying reparations until recently to also uh, uh, slave owners and their children. Like, that's a real thing that England did. Um, it, of course, will never happen because, like, uh, as Puerto Rican vegan socialist is correctly pointing out, 
out our entire economy has been based off of the oppressive structures of slavery and basically legal slavery by a different name, right? The 13th Amendment and the utilization of the criminal justice system to still have a permanent underclass is precisely what we've done. Or in some instances, we've also outsourced the slavery into uh, victims of uh, America's imperialist actions. And we, of course, continue uh, churning out new eviscerated areas all around the world, specifically so that we can, one, extract their natural resources and also to utilize their, their labor force for cheap manufacturing. So there was a bald guy by the name of Lenin who wrote about this, uh, imperialism, the final stage of capitalism. It's uh, in how it necessitates, capitalism necessitates imperialism. Uh, highly suggest you guys, uh, yeah, some call him Lenin. Uh, highly suggest you guys read him. But ultimately, those are some of the many reasons why uh, this is purely hypothetical. But it is also kind of weird that even spiritually speaking, people don't want to come to terms with reparation even as a pure hypothetical. Like they don't even want to, they, they can't even engage in it from that perspective. It was wild to me. I have no problems with reparations if they had happened initially during this like slavery or the civil rights movement or any of that. But to try and do that now logistically it just doesn't really make any sense and like oh okay never mind then fuck it yolo uh that's fine then no 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 don't don't correct it don't correct it at all actually where would this money come from like we're in so much debt <laughs> as a nation would i get this money i'm by race we never equalize society black children still go to segregated schools they get significantly less money per child true uh look at the chicago public school system if you want to learn more black families never had their housing purchases subsidized with the government loans and much of the new deal excluded jobs overwhelmingly held by black or brown people also true that's before we talk about the war on drugs targeting black communities communities or Jim Crow. Yeah. And remnants of systemic discrimination that still exists today. Direct and indirect forms of discrimination. Racial or triracial, like do mixed people get it? And like, do Irish people get reparations when they were indentured servants? I think for reparations, if you can find specific instances of somebody being like actually deprived of something, um, whether you, specific instances of like the 40 acres and a meal uh, promise, or whether you can find specific entrance uh, uh, cases of like Chinese people building railroads or Irish people, or whatever, people being deprived of things, that's okay. But otherwise, yeah, it's a logistical nightmare. There's no possible way that we'd be able to do it well. Yeah, America's unique because we have bent over backwards for decades now, putting minorities in a position of privilege. I feel like we have. Yeah, no, that's what I'm always saying, dude. I'm always thinking, you know what these minorities have too much of? Privilege. That's a great take, man. Thank you. And word Andy is a lib. Yeah, when you're fucking, when he plays him in front of black conservatives, he will be the biggest liberal of all time. I've okay? done so much to give back to the communities that were obviously wronged. And I agree with both of you. Like, had this happened a long time ago, I would understand it. If we had specific incidences that we could trace where people were just completely screwed over, I would respect it. But right now, I don't deserve a payment for something my great, 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 great grandparents went through. And I don't think that white people are responsible for paying that to me. Bro, this is like, here's a thing that I don't understand, okay? This is actually peasant brain. Really? Rich people have never said, please don't give me money, Mr. Government Man. I only hear this from fucking dumbass poor people, okay? Broke boys. I remember when the when the uh when the Trump bucks were coming in during COVID and motherfuckers would come into my chat and be like, dude, I don't feel comfortable taking this money. It's too much money. I'm like, what are you saying? This is the first time in your entire fucking life the, the federal government has actually got your back, okay? To take the fucking money. I've never heard a rich motherfucker be like, ah, these subsidies, perhaps they're a little too much. As a matter of fact, they do the exact opposite they say hey why aren't you giving me more of the fucking uh, tax dollars in, in the form of subsidies you fucking asshole give me more money and also cut my fucking taxes at the same time it's crazy man americans are so fucking cooked their brains are just like fundamentally broken they're like uh -huh, please i don't want reparations as a black person like even conservative liberal doesn't matter like it just doesn't make sense. Let's say in a hypothetical scenario, the federal government's like, sorry, black people for the whole slavery thing. We're going to give you money. What the fuck are you saying no to that? Like, what's wrong with you? It, it blows my mind. If we impose or, yeah, impose reparations now, I think it would rip America apart. I think that we're already <laughs> separated enough as it is. And now you're going to have people walking around going, you I mean, yeah, these people think that fucking affirmative action is responsible for racism. Yeah, of course, Renee, who thinks affirmative action is responsible for racism and not the racism in and of itself of how the society was designed is going to be like reparations would rip this country apart. I mean, come on. Actually, I agree with that. Reparations would cause the right to go bananas. Yeah, it'll never happen. So that's why I'm saying it's a pure hypothetical of a thing that will never happen, okay? Matt Chrisman nailed this perfectly. The reason Americans don't vote in their own interest is because they don't view politics as a mean to improve their material condition. They view it as a tool to punish their political enemies. I agree. To a certain degree, I agree with that, yes. 
That's what happens from the Reagan era all the way till now, when you have lost complete confidence in the federal government doing anything right by you, or even your local government's doing anything right by you, whether it be fucking fixing potholes or forcing the cops to actually do their jobs. You know what I mean? It's never going to happen. So now you're just like, well, maybe I can just like annoy the other side. And Republicans are much better at spite-based politics than, than Democrats are for the most part. Giving somebody money doesn't mean anything if they don't know what to do with the money or how to handle the money. So if the primary issue Oh, this just, again, close your eyes. It's a white person saying this, okay? You're just racist. You're like a racist person. The reason why we have to play this role here is because no matter what, Americans and everyone else is like, conditioned everyone is conditioned into thinking that like one black people do not have the capacity to be like actual white supremacists when that is absolutely the case because white supremacy in and of itself is obviously a product of social conditioning so if you live in a white supremacist nation and you're a black person you can still be with some uh you know maybe financial help as well a, a white supremacist and out about white supremacists i've heard this argument before which is black people don't know what to do with the money they'll just go and like buy dumb shit it's like wow that's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. You in black culture or with black people is generational trauma, then maybe they need more therapy than they need money, honestly. Which conservatives are also against. Well, that's kind of my argument. Like if there is like that, like generational trauma or whatever, like I think examples of like free healthcare, um, it, they could see a therapist and not be, you know, fall into debt. And I think the argument of like, the logistical nightmares of it. I think if we want to pay for something in this country, we usually find a way to do it, especially when it comes to the military. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, I mean, we pay for multi-billion dollar it's, it's jets all the, the time. It's not the dollars, it's who's supposed to get them. Yeah. Not to attack progressives, but that, that is like the most progressive idea in the world, is like, I can see the headlines, like reparations voted on in Congress to be paid in the form of free therapy for people in the hood. That just sounds like the funniest thing in the world but well i also don't think it bro those are your people destiny those are the libs like i thought he was like a democratic party defender i'm surprised that he would be making fun of the democratic party like this because I, I don't think that he said that but it's gonna come directly from like you know white person to black person like oh like, you you um your lineage uh affected his lineage it is though like in san francisco they were going to raise the average family or the average household in san francisco bro i'm surprised he didn't fucking rip a new asshole into the black conservatives more like that's legitimately shocking it's poor performance and i know he has that dog in him i'm like i mean this is a guy who sent a burning cross to a black conservative on twitter okay he literally sent a burning like a clan burning cross to a black conservative and said is it lit he did that that's wild to me that he's just sitting here like a like a little pussycat years later and like me 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 like what, what, what's happening he held back here uh, and for people being like oh no he's a twitter tough guy no like he's he's very good at debates that's not it, the debates don't necessarily mean that you're right righteous truthful have facts on your side it means that you're very good at rhetoric he is very good at rhetoric something that i have maintained a position that i maintained for a very long time but one other thing that you have to understand here is that despite you know uh, Destiny being a keyboard warrior, he he performs very well in public on debates as well. I'm just, like I said, shocked at how tempered he is in this situation, in a, a antagonistic situation where he's supposed to be like ripping and he has the go-ahead to rip into the black conservatives here. The $5 million per black person proposal that they had. And I used to live in the San Francisco Bay Area and I was repulsed by that because you have so many homeless veterans on the streets and they were going to give black people a home for as little as... Wow, dude. Wow. The homeless, the homeless veteran narrative it's like dude this guy hit the conservative bingo bro you don't give a fuck about homeless veterans dog you literally don't care about homeless people like you, you just don't care you're a prager you guy why are you fucking lying and acting like you give a single shred of a shit about homeless people i hate this fucking mentality you're standing against that too so what the fuck do you mean why are you bringing this up right now why are we acting like you now what do i have whenever i fucking talk to conservatives i have to like shut off my brain to to act like i don't have fucking object permanence so i can just like believe their argument for that brief moment it's like okay then let's give housing to every homeless person veteran or not okay can we do that no then shut the fuck up you can't just use one societal problem as a cudgel against another one simply for the sake of that argument and hope that like 
no one that is talking to you is going to examine your perspective on the matter. It's just a prop. It's just a fucking talking point. God, I hate these people. One dollar just for being black. Mind you, slavery wasn't even in California. So why that was going to be the case, like I don't understand, but it's extremely unrealistic to think that. How did black people get to California, man? Like how did black people get to the continental United States? Like what, what do you mean? Slavery wasn't in California. Oh, okay, never mind, dude. How, how did your fucking great, great, great grandparents get here, dog? How did that happen? Huh? How? Were they 1776ers? Were they on board? They're like, hell yeah, dude. Love this shit. What the fuck is he saying? Like what? Do, do black people not have the capacity to move? from state to state. But the average family in San Francisco can afford that. That's because Newsom wants to get reelected. <laughs> okay, but you don't really Precisely. care about homeless veterans, right? Like, oh, you, don't, you don't support You don't know me. Like you're, all your arguments are but, ad hominem. But, but you're Literally here. every yeah. single one. Okay, at, dude, this is a great take. Great take, Alec. Be like, oh, okay, what are the what are the initiatives you have to combat homelessness? Because I know Dennis Prager's opinion on it, and he's paying your paychecks. I know he don't give a fuck about housing the homeless, veteran or not. Ad hominem, ad hominem. What the fuck do you mean ad hominem? That is a genuinely important talking point that you brought up voluntarily. I didn't fucking say, what's your thought on homeless people out of nowhere? You brought it up, bitch. What? is your fucking solution that's not what an ad hominem is fuck i hate these fucking stupid debate perverts who like literally don't know the logical fallacies that they're just dropping in a fucking argument ad you're here as a conservative so yes, so what policies do you support for homeless veterans there's ways to address i mean specifically I, for homeless in general that's a yeah. whole different conversation yeah. no it's not no, it's not. He brought it up. Then it's a deflection, okay? He brought it up as a way to misdirect, and now he's holding to him, holding him to account. You brought it up. You can't just say it's a different conversation. Why'd you fucking bring it up then in this conversation? You can't bring it up and then be like, oh, well, this is a different conversation. Why'd you bring it up? You think there are no black homeless veterans? You think there are no black homeless people? Why'd you bring that up? Why'd you bring that up? Fuck you. Oh my God. I fucking hate debates so much. I hate debates so fucking much. They're not used to, like conservatives, especially like commentators are just like not used to any fucking real valid pushback from someone who knows what the fuck they're doing which is doubly why i'm mad at the fucking hobbit sitting in the weirdest way possible in the middle of the goddamn fucking debate stage right now sitting there like a fucking little kitty cat what is he doing i have heard this man say unhinged shit to like trans activists or whoever the fuck he has perceived to the left of him who uh, that that he is mad at on any given day and and he's over here sitting there like a like a little cutie patootie not even fucking ripping a new asshole to these guys making horrible arguments even from the aspect of like being a guy who wants to see a little bit of blood if you're into blood sport like this is wild to me they he's just not he's just not fucking shitting on him more white liberals have a savior complex well i gotta say this is a shock i never expected all four of you to just come forward and admit it but you know what i'm happy with these results i just think it's uh a lot of people a lot of i guess uh people you know of the left whatever um can kind of fall into that trap of uh thinking that, you know, black people as a monolith need to be behaved as like, as a whole. I have no shame about it. I have a savior complex as an older brother and I will save you whether you like it or not. So that's just me. Well, it's definitely not. White liberals have a savior complex. Wait, why is she not there? It 100% is true. Yeah, it is true. There are plenty of white liberals who do have a fucking savior complex, who do actually come from a perspective of a different kind of racism or racial discrimination in general. It's a classic meme that I shit on regularly of like uh, of like white people that will turn around and be like, they'll see, it's like the Michael Che joke, right? You turn around and you see a black person, you're immediately like, oh my God, uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry about racism. I'm so sorry about police brutality during like the BLM protests and shit. It's really fucking stupid. I don't give a shit. I know that I'm sure uh, Destiny will use this as an opportunity to be like, yeah, I know people that uh, have this. I've debated people that have this. I'm assuming, or people will assume that he's talking about me, I'm sure. Ultimately, if I was that much of a white liberal with a savior complex, I wouldn't be fucking called a racist all the goddamn time by black Twitter, I suspect. But then again, it doesn't take much. You know, I'm, I'm both the most racist man against black people and the most racist man against white people simultaneously at the same time equal opportunity racism for the most part but let's see uh, because a lot of us are really just exhausted of being viewed as our skin color because when you have this mindset that you need to save black people and we're just sitting here minding our own business and living our lives the way we want to i don't know why it is that people feel this immense pressure to be so apologetic and just 
always trying to cater and coddle to black people when we just want to be treated like everybody else. We're equal for a reason. I think especially recently with a lot of riot stuff that's gone on or protest stuff that's gone on, people on the left tend to infantilize a lot of different types of protesters and especially even talking to you know, some of the other black content creators I do content with, when you hear a lot of progressives come out and say, well, they don't have a choice but to riot or break into the store, or while well, they're stealing, you know, these electronics or shoes for, it's a little bit weird that there's such a complex on the left to excuse like every single possible negative behavior from somebody, as long as they're a skin color that you're kind of in charge of protecting. I, f I hate how fucking reductive this take is. It is so unimaginably stupid and reductive, but it doesn't matter. America is a white supremacist nation, and no matter what happens, reductive ass fucking takes like this will always be prescient, it will always gain prominence, it will always be celebrated by a bunch of dumbasses who agree with it, but agree with way worse versions of this as well. Good reasons, you just don't realize it. I think a lot of people kind of look both- Like, no one is saying fucking people are stealing shoes for good reason. Like, I hate this fucking argument, dude. I hate this argument so much. It's so stupid. It is no different than what, like, racist dumbasses say on a regular basis. But that's not too shocking. I, I love this fucking take. And no matter what I say about this particular subject matter, wh whatever I say about this take is that everyone has already made up their minds. He admitted this comment was about you. Yeah, I don't give a fuck, dude. Yeah, great. I'm glad that I'm, I have a permanent fucking occupying space in his mind. He unironically cannot let go of and that it's been fucking years and uh, big homie still hasn't let go. You know what I mean? Fine. This is the first time I've reacted to a video with like Destiny in it in like probably I would say three, four years. There's like been some clips where he's in it. Anyway, so having said that, crime doesn't happen because people are good or bad for the most part. Okay, the overwhelming majority of crime happens as a consequence of people's material conditions. This is a constant fact that people have known about since ancient Greece. It's not that different. Okay, no matter what happens, this is why crime happens. In order to genuinely solve crime, you must not simply focus on the externalities, focus on a justice that is draconian, focus on a justice that is specifically there as a deterrence mechanism and focus on the root causes of why crime happens. If you want to solve it, solve people's material inequalities, something that every single person, at least on this side of the panel, has agreed with so far. Solve the systemic inequalities and people will not fucking riot. That's it. There's also more prescient, more important kinds of crime that never get punished. I've talked about this so many fucking times before and have been proven right by just time passing. People used to say this about the Walgreens shit when people constantly were like, oh, Walgreens are closing down in San Francisco due to rampant crime, organized, serialized, rampant crime that's occurring in San Francisco. I told you at the time that that was bullshit. Everybody fucking yelled at me, including the gnome man over there. I didn't hear any apologies from him when the Walgreens CFO openly came out and was like, yeah, we were greatly exaggerating the crime thing. It was absolutely a narrative that they went along with because they wanted to shelter. They wanted to shelter the real reason why they were closing their fucking stores, which was because, you know, rent's too fucking high even for Walgreens, okay? And brick and mortar retail across the board is not exactly profitable with e-commerce blowing the fuck up. Shouts out to Amazon for that, okay? But instead of admitting that, which would have genuinely hurt their their stock prices they they decided to hide the reason why they were downsizing in certain areas by feeding into a narrative that already had existed well we have to break down sometimes why these riots happen you know mlk once said that riots are the voice of the unheard so if you are to address the problem and stop the riots you have to address the underlying inequality that has historically been pervasive you know even if you as individual people are doing fine and you don't want anybody else to uh, get in the way of that, that's cool, and I'm not going to get. I'm I'm not going to be the one to get in the way, but the, the disparities are undeniable. So if you take pride in having like a white savior complex, what is it that you think that you're doing to save black people, and what is it that you think that you're saving black well, people from? I am trying to make the world a better place through whatever means I can. And but you're doing it on the backs of us. I uh, I wouldn't I, say so. Yeah. I, I actually do. I feel like like you want to be a savior for, and you're using me to make yourself feel good. That's no. She's right. That is what white savior is. That's literally what it is. She's absolutely right. Because no matter how conservative, she's still black and she's probably experienced that kind of racial discrimination. That's what how I'm How am hearing. I hurting you? You're, but you're not letting me have my own voice. You're not letting me speak. How? <laughs> you're speaking now? No. You're cutting uh, her off. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I feel like I have to. Yeah. Well, what's like happening, I mean, you're speaking right now, you're speaking right now in this particular setting. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is 
like um, you, you, you took it back to riots and so forth. And it makes it seem like the only way that we as black people can voice our, have a voice is by riots. And then you need to come along and you need to say, okay, poor little black child, let me help you. Let me help you. That's offensive to me. And, and, and I feel like you're making yourself feel good about trying to tame, help us. And it, I also think that like when we talk about damage, I think especially when it comes to a lot of the shoplifting stuff that's going on in certain cities, you get a lot of white people that live in nice suburbs saying things like shoplifting is no big deal, that's fine. Oh my God, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. To portray like white liberals in the suburbs as defending shoplifting is the most idiotic thing I've ever fucking heard in my entire life. It's the classic trope, I'm gonna die. Oh God, yeah, no, that's precisely what they're doing. You wanna know what fucking white people in the suburbs are doing when they see black people protesting, dude? What, what is that fucking couple? What, the, the ones that like ran? What is it? The white couple with guns that fucking came out with their AR-15s? The McClocks, the McCloskeys, yes. This is what fucking white people are doing when they see black people in their neighborhoods, okay? Get the fuck out of here, dog. Get the absolute fuck out of here. Who do you think is closer to like a wealthy white person living in the suburbs? What mentality is closer to a wealthy white person living in the suburbs? A person who's like, oh man, I'm so fucking woke. Like I think shoplifting is not a big deal. A person that you have invented in your mind that you say I am exactly like, or this person, or fucking Kyle Rittenhouse. This is so incredibly fucking dumb. And then you'll catch YouTube videos of them later on being in a Walgreens in like a shoddy neighborhood. And they're like, man, why is the deodorant behind a locked case? It's very easy to sit behind a gated community and say, oh, well, you know, it's not a big deal, you know. Um, they, they steal because they have to. Riots are the language. Dude, no one living in the fucking gated community is saying, I'm sorry, dude, come on. I know this meme about, like, this is literally just me. He's saying, like, I'm saying this. I don't live in a fucking gated community, dumbass. God damn it, this shit pisses me. No, I do, actually. To all my haters, I do live in a gated community with auto turrets. Remember that. There are literal auto turrets outside and a moat with crocodiles in it. I will fucking... The point is, a lot of people love pointing to this, like, straw man that they've created of me where it's like, oh, Hassan lives in a gated community. That's why he doesn't care about crime. It's like, motherfucker, you live in, like, Miami, don't you? Where the fuck does this guy live? I know he doesn't live in L.A. anymore, right? Or does he still live in L.A.? I live in an area that is literally portrayed as one of the highest crime neighborhoods in Los Angeles on local news all the fucking time, okay? What the fuck are you talking about? Organized retail theft is happening in my neighborhood all the time. Like, what does this take? It's so stupid. Which of the unheard. I think people haven't read the full context of that quote. When MLK was saying riots were the language of the unheard and you need to address the underlying condition, he wasn't condoning the rioting. He was just understanding it. Oh, That's, okay. So I guess at least I'm in agreement with MLK on that one. This is awkward. <laughs> Hi guys. A draconian attitude towards crime and punishment as a as a deterrence measure is demonstrably a failure. That's why when you look at European cities, that's why when you look at European nations, as a matter of fact, with higher levels of social safety nets, even though they're not perfect either, they have lower levels of crime in general, even if they are more aggressive about documenting every single instance of crime. The part of the reason why is not because they have worse prison conditions overall or that their cops are fucking brutal and militarized overall. The reason why their fucking crime rates are way lower is because if you have food in your belly, if you have a better paying fucking job, then you see no reason to go out and do fuck shit. Okay, crime is only done by people who have completely lost faith in the structures that they exist under. When you lose everything else and you feel like you have no other option, that's when you do fucking crime. That's it. Um, so I didn't step forward just because I don't want to broad brush all white liberals as having a white savior complex. I have experienced white liberals who do have that and um, they're very unpleasant people. <laughs> but I don't think every single white person who's a liberal or who is an activist for BLM or any of those things necessarily has a white savior complex. I think that there's a lot of white people who genuinely think that black people are oppressed and they want to help and that's what they're told. What it seems like to me when most people have savior complex, regardless of who, whom they're trying to save, it's like they're taking real pain and real trauma and using that as a way to push this political agenda, but also to alleviate themselves of whatever guilt that they feel unnecessarily. Like, I don't know why a white person today would feel guilty for things that happened decades ago, let alone something that happened centuries ago. I've never seen a white person say, I personally feel guilty for slavery. I Maybe they're out that. there, but 
that I've never heard that. Yeah, our, in second grade, when they taught us about slavery, almost every kid in my classroom would spend their entire time looking at black kids in that classroom. Oh, How was I supposed to not think, wow, these people are feeling guilty for something that they have no involvement in and I have no involvement in? Every kid in, in my classroom grade. understood the context. So. People hate feeling uncomfortable, and obviously you don't want to feel like the bad guy, and so they, I feel like it comes from a place of like, oh, well, like, let me make sure that I'm different and like I'm showing. I don't understand. This is one conversation that escapes me completely whenever people say that whenever people say like i am i have like white guilt and i am a white savior or whatever i don't get it because like i didn't grow up in this country so slavery and its impact shadow slavery and its impact is not something that i have ever internalized you know what i mean like my people enslaved a lot of white people that's what they did they it was mostly white people. That's why a lot of people hate fucking Turkish people and, you know, 4chan levels of racism are always like never, they've never given up on that where they're like, oh my God, they were the, the white people that you would say, fuck you, you know, that sort of shit. So I, I've never, I've never felt this white guilt. I just, I, I don't know. I don't, I genuinely don't know where it comes from beyond like only trying to understand it from the perspective of like what conservatives are saying. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just like, I don't get it. Whenever people say that. Thank you that I want to like help you, but it comes across like, I think it can land very poorly. I'll tell you what, stop it. Stop okay. it. Because what happens is when you put yourself as the white savior, what you do is you elevate yourself above the black person because you feel then like you have to save us. So just stop it. Just treat everybody regular and normal. Just like if just like I would treat you regular and normal, you treat us regular and normal rather than trying to save yeah, us. No, it's so funny that the black conservatives uh, arrived at a classic Hassan Abik trope, which is just be normal. I say this a million times a day. I say it quite frequently when we're talking about black issues issues in this very white audience i say it all the time it's true just be fucking normal she's right that's the probably the only right thing that she said so far i wanted to bring up earlier about taxes because you were saying that you don't you you had your job and you were talking about how like you get the tax every every time and you're like seeing your tax go up i worked in nursing homes in 2020 covid the last thing that was on my mind when i watched 60 and 70 year olds on their deathbeds suffocating to death was taxes. I was worried about health care. I didn't give a shit about taxes in that time. So when I go to work every day, that's what I see. That's what I want to fix. I see, I see you once again uh, ele elevating yourself above the rest of us and, and particularly wait what what do you mean he did not do that at all what the fuck yeah at me a white man elevating himself above a black person I'm that's he what, called that's, me a bootlicker that's, 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 that's what, he called that's me a bootlicker oh no i but triggered them I, all i'm sorry I, I'm, oh, I'm sorry not i'm okay. chilling buddy. Yes, so you what are. i hope comes oh, out I'm of this chilling. conversation wait what the fuck bro i swear to god dude this lady's just insanely insecure i mean it's on two points like she's she's like a business lady right she loves reagan and stuff so i think it's uh she hates him on two different accounts like one she perceives him as a liberal and two she perceives him as like a liberal who wants to fucking take more money out of her pocket and is that we're all americans and because we're all americans we and actually we we know that america has a bunch of problems and i think every person here wants to solve the problems and i think everybody is bringing what they have to the table with their ideas on how to get us to unify this kind of stuff eh, right but <laughs> you got something in there hopefully i mean i'm going to give you the benefit benefit of the doubt that you have something in there that's redeeming about you that would bring you cannot convince me the older generations don't have brain damage from leaded gasoline i 1000 percent believe that because i mean it's not a conspiracy. Bring all it's of real. americans together so i hope that we end on the note of american like when ronald reagan brought crack cocaine in the black neighborhoods i fucking love that that's why i voted for him and i was like big fan of that which was great. And I'm personally, personally, I thought very cool things happened after that. You and ITY. I, I would like to say I, we're all made in the image of God. <laughs> and so we're all have our inerrant worth just because we're made in his image. And we should treat each other as fellow image bearers, not just by the color of our skin. I mean, as Martin Luther King said. <laughs> he also did not like capitalism. I think something that's really challenging, um, I've definitely been guilty in the past of throwing around the Uncle Tom word. Uh, I used to be hardcore progressive, I'm still relatively progressive, but something that I've learned as time has gone on is being a white person isolates you from a lot of the different types of race.
Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, I mean, there's way more terms that he uses than Uncle Tom <laughs> regularly, but Aloha Badly, they all want the last words, so cringe. I mean, yeah, they, well, Jubilee gave it to him. Um, good video overall. I did think that uh, Destiny's debate performance here was very shitty, surprisingly shitty. I thought he would be way more fucking vicious. There were so many different opportunities for him to be vicious. He spent a lot of the time not necessarily pushing back on bad arguments even, which I thought was interesting. Maybe a lot of that stuff got cut. That's probably what it is. But yeah, because it, it, was, it was like shocking from my perspective, at least. The only people he debated the whole video were the two more progressive people. Yeah, like he, I mean, he didn't just spend a lot of time debating the more progressive people, but he definitely did uh, do poorly in comparison to what I expected.